Hello friends, welcome back to Aaron's Anxiety. I am your host Aaron, your personal guide through anxiety. <laughs> Today we need to talk about how you need to come up with something that excites you in your life. Uh, for anxiety reasons, this is going to be a big one, a big, big thing. Uh, stress induces anxiety. Um, and so a lot of times we have little bits of stress throughout our life and we don't really realize what's going on. And then the stress builds and builds and it drags and it pulls for a long time. And all of a sudden we start having big anxiety problems. Stress turns to anxiety, anxiety turns into high anxiety. High anxiety can turn into all kinds of different things, whether it's depression or depersonalization or whatever. Um, so that being said, it's important that we figure out the stressors in your life to get that stuff to go away. Otherwise, no matter what pills you take, uh, if you ever decide to come off of those pills, it's just gonna, it's just gonna come back. You know what I mean? You didn't fix any of the problems, you just masked them. Um, so that being said, what is your go-to? What is your thing? What is your hobby? What is the thing that excites you? What is the thing that you think about before you go to sleep? That's what you need to be spending time doing. Uh, you're spending too much time worrying about this, worrying about that, worrying about Monday morning, and that's a big one. Uh, as far as your job goes, if you hate your job, uh, and you just dread going back to work on Monday, you're not alone. There's a lot of people that do that. Um, you need to come up with something to excite you about that job. You know what I mean? Like, making new friends at that job, do something that's gonna make your experience at that job better. Whether that's, you know, you being more motivated or like I said, making new friends at that job. Hey, I'm gonna go talk to some men, never talk to him. I'm gonna make a new friend today. That way you have another side mission in your normal job. Might make it more exciting, might make it more fun. Uh, it, oh, The Office, you remember The Office? If you guys have ever watched the show, it's a, it's a funny show, I love The Office. Um, but Jim, in the show, is a, tall skinny guy and uh, he doesn't like his job however he spends a lot of his time messing with another co-worker Dwight and for him that makes the job like he looks forward to messing with Dwight you know what I mean and then even later on in the episodes he leaves and he talks about how he misses Dwight because he you know misses messing with Dwight um, so that was his like uh, thing to de-stress himself from this job that he thinks isn't going anywhere or he's not making enough money, whatever it is. The job that he's dreading, he found something to enjoy in that job. So now I'm not saying you should go prank all of your coworkers, uh, which I mean, that's what you want to do. Just tell me how it went, it's awesome. Uh, however, you need to find something in that job that makes it worthwhile for you that really de-stresses your brain. You can find something, you just gotta look and you need to come up with a way to stop stressing about Monday morning. If you're going into Friday thinking, oh, I've got a couple days away, and then you get to Saturday and go, oh, Sunday, it's tomorrow, and then Sunday means Monday's coming, Sunday. No, going back to work tomorrow. No. That's not a good job for you. That's definitely not a good mindset to have in that job. Um, one thing that I can recommend uh, for a job that you don't like, and it's because I've done it myself, is uh, I, it's gonna be hard to say, when you don't like to do something, you're not going to put your full effort into it. So that being said, um, if you can put your full effort into it and just become really good at something you don't like to do, your life is going to get quite a bit better. Make it a competition. Figure out whoever's better than you at your job. Be honest with yourself. That's the only thing you can do. Be honest with yourself and say, hey, Mary's kind of better than me. I'm gonna take Mary down. So like, okay, I worked at PetSmart for a while back in high school. Um, and I was a dog groomer. And I also did dog training and stuff like that. Um, Taught me a lot with little Dora, but uh, I was a dog groomer for a while, and that's not exactly a fun like the dogs, those dogs are awesome. Okay, 
anytime you're working with animals, that is awesome, okay? And I love the dogs. The dogs were nothing, there were no problem. The problem was, was the bosses and how they structured their system. So I didn't like it. And I had to work Saturday, so it wasn't like a Monday morning. But when I did have my days off, that day coming back, I was always dreading it. And then one day I thought, you know what? Who's the best person there? And it was uh, a lady named Erica. Erica was on it, man. She was good. Uh, she ended up going off and doing her own thing and started up her own mobile pet spa. And she works for herself now and blah, blah, blah. But I thought, Erica is on it. Erica, she's killing it. I need to be better than Erica. How can I be better than Erica? So I thought about it. On my time off. I wasn't dreading going back to work. I came up with a plan to how to make my system better than Erica's. And by the time I came back, I put the system into play and I redesigned how they wanted the dogs to be washed, dried, groomed, called, ready to go home. So I redesigned it. Um, I was at the point where I was taking on almost double what the other groomers were doing because I had a system where when one dog was being washed, the other one was drying, and then while that one was drying, something else is going on. Like, I had a really good system, and it helped because I had been in a self-employed environment up until that point, so it was a lot easier to, you know, transition over. So, at that point, once I got on it, and I was had a competition, and I was in a game, now <laughs> I'm kind of excited to go to work because I want to take Erica down. Like, keep in mind, I love Erica. She was funny and she was a wonderful person. So nothing bad on Erica, but I want to be, I want to beat her. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> so that was my way of coping. So um, you need to find something to make Monday morning fun. Look forward to it. Even if it means you have a puzzle sitting at your desk, waiting to do a puzzle. And now I gotta get back to that puzzle. You gotta come up with something. Something to de-stress your brain. And for some of you, as bad as it's gonna say, uh, if you're in a situation where you can do it, and sometimes you think you can't, but you can, sometimes you just need to get away from this job. Sometimes you just need to get out, get away, get a new job, try to find something else, start hunting, start looking for something that's going to pay you. You'll be surprised what you find. Um, that's why I don't give money to panhandlers. It's so easy to find a job nowadays. It's incredibly easy. People talk about how hard it is. When my wife, <laughs> she quit a job, she had four interviews for jobs within a week because she was looking. You gotta look. You can have all kinds of stuff. You just gotta want it. You gotta go for it. So if you want out of this job, just know you're gonna have to put a fourth effort on your own time to get out of this job. But once you get out of the job, even if it's a new job, that still sucks. If it's new, it's new people, new experiences, it will de-stress your mind. And this is what we want. This is how we get this anxiety down. Alright, I'm going to wrap it up here guys, I don't want to go on too long today, uh, but you need to come up with something, and this is just one way to get the stress down in your life, and you wouldn't believe how important it's going to be to get this stress down, um, and it's not just your job, it's other things, if you have people in your life that you are just, <sighs> I got to go see this person, sometimes you got to cut them out. Sucks. Sucks to say. Friends. Sometimes it's family. Sometimes you gotta cut these people away because it's gonna just distress you and it's make more problems for you. So, uh, you got this, guys. Uh, if you're going through the thicket, you'll be alright. It's gonna take a little bit of time. Patience is gonna be your best, best friend. And uh, symptom searching is not gonna be your friend. It may make you feel better, but it's odd, oddly, oddly enough, it's gonna make you feel worse because you're going to find something that's going to trigger you. So stay away from symptom searching. Uh, I would stay away from trying to find other people with the same problems as you because they're going to tell you their problems, which is going to make you think you have their problems. It's a vicious cycle. So if you're in the thicket, know it's going to go away. You just have to work for it. You have to want it. Um, I, I give a lot of tips and tricks here, guys. So I'm, And ideas. I'm trying to put ideas into your head of different ways. You may be like me, where you like your job. That's a wonderful thing. Um, but if you don't, you need to work towards it. But it's one thing that brings you down. It always used to bring me down when I didn't work here. So, all right, friends. Until next time, 
Uh, I'm gonna wrap the video up here. Be awesome, you know what I mean? Try to pick everybody else up around you. Uh, don't be the negative Ned or negative Nancy. And um, you got this. I can't even stress to you much. You got this. It's not forever, you got it. All right, friends, until next time, I'm Aaron, you're awesome, and I'll see you in the next video.